Hello everyone, today I'm going to review the Fujifilm X-T5, the most anticipated camera of the year. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Andrei Dima. I'm a professional travel photographer and video maker and this is my Fujifilm X-T5 review. If you followed my channel, you know how many videos and tutorials I made for the X-T4, my favorite hybrid camera. And I'm so glad that Fujifilm finally released an update to that because something started to feel old, like the autofocus. But otherwise, the X-T4 is still a very capable camera for video and photography. But today is not about that camera, it's about the X-T5 and how it improves over the X-T4. So let's begin with the build quality. Like the X-T4 I opted for the silver version and I hope the paint this time is better because if you saw my long term review of the X-T4 I complained about that. The paint wore off in just 2 years in some parts of the camera. The first thing I noticed after I used the X-T5 is how the dials turn. They seem a bit firmer and the sound is nice if you care about things like this. Also, the top button you use to block the wheels now goes deeper. The exposure compensation dial seems a bit bigger and it is easier to reach with your right hand thumb. The front and back wheels are pressable just like on the X-T4 and not like on the X-H2S and X-H2. The back dial is nice to use and firm, but the one in the front is a bit too loose for my taste. Maybe it's just my camera, but I found myself turning it easily by mistake when using lenses without aperture ring. All the other buttons feel the same and that is a good thing. Using the X-H2S for the past months, I got used to that joystick and I like it more than this one, but by no means is it bad. It is very easy to use and precise. The ports door seem nicer and the memory card door seem the same. On the X-T5 you get dual SD card slots for the UHS-2 and not CF Express plus SD like on the X-H2 line. And this makes a difference for video and fast photo shooting as you will see later. When it comes to ports, they are the same like on the X-T4, micro HDMI, microphone port, remote port and the USB Type-C for charging and headphones, with the adapter included. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the most controversial thing on the Fujifilm X-T4, the screen. Fuji brought back the X-T3 screen because a lot of people complained about the one on the X-T4. After shooting for more than 2 years on the X-T4 and for a couple of months on the X-H2S, I got used to the flippy screen. But yeah, this one is better for street and landscape photography. But I have a small problem with it and this might be just my camera. I never used an X-T3 or another X-T5. The screen, when you fully open it, has this small annoying play. If this is on all cameras, well, I kinda don't like it. If it is just on mine, please tell me in the comments and I will go change it. Regarding the screen, I like the increased resolution compared to the X-T4. It's not much, but it is nice. Speaking about improved displays, the EVF now has a 0.85 magnification, which I like, and the EVF is more color accurate. The one on the X-T4 needed some tweaking to make it look like the display, so I'm glad they did that. Do I like the one on my X-H2S more? Yes I do. That little thing it's like IMAX compared to other EVFs. But for all intended purposes, this is good enough. Regarding overall quality, the camera feels as nice as the X-T4. The magnesium alloy bodies from Fujifilm never disappoint. You have the same battery as the X-T4, X-H2 and X-H2S, but Fuji claimed the camera consumes less energy, so it takes more photos and video. I took around 500 photos and some video until the battery depleted. One last thing and we jump to image quality. The grip. The grip feels so nice. First day I got the camera, I slapped the XF 35mm f1.4 on it and went out to take photos. And man is this my favorite combo of all time now. My hands 
were so comfortable holding the camera for a couple of hours and this was also helped by the weight and smaller size. It's a really nice grip that doesn't need an extra grip, only if you have large hands. Now, first thing I want to get out of the way is pixel shift. A lot of people say it's not good, it's useless. Well, it is not good when you have moving subjects in the frame, because you will get some weird pixelation. I saw some videos recently and they had an error when combining the photos. Don't select all the photos in the folder because you will get weird results. Just select the first photo in the folder and the app will do the rest. Pixel shift is great for people that want to take architecture photos and for product and macro photography. So it's not useless if it doesn't fit your needs. It's a great feature to have. Here is a comparison between a 40 megapixel photo from the X-T5 and a 160 megapixel one. You get a bit more detail if you really need it. And if you want to use Enhance in Lightroom on this 160 megapixel file, sadly it doesn't work. I tried. Ok, let's talk about the big update on the camera and that is the 40 megapixel sensor. For me, this is a plus because I also use a 46 megapixel full frame camera for my work and every time I switched from the X-T4, X-H2S to that and back, I missed that extra resolution. But this is me and my work. Do you need 40 megapixels? No, you don't. 26 megapixels is enough for everything, even less. Is it nice to have 40 megapixels? Yes, it is. Are you going to pay more for storage? Yes, you will. The files are big. Is your old computer going to hate you for feeding him these files? Yes, he is. Are your older lenses going to suffer from this high resolution? Some of them for sure. Joke aside, not all lenses will be able to resolve all those megapixels. But this doesn't mean they won't get a boost in image quality mostly when stopped down to f5.6 and more. Some will resolve only 30 or less, some more, but you will still get an image boost. With great power comes noise. The more megapixels you have, the worse the camera performs in low light, because the size of the pixels is smaller and they get less light than bigger pixels on smaller sensors. Well, in my experience, I found that even if you get more noise with high megapixel sensors, the photo still has more detail after you denoise it in post. Back to the Fujifilm X-T5. In my opinion, the noise performance is just like on the X-T4, which is very impressive considering this is a 40 megapixel sensor. I don't know what Fuji did, but I am impressed with the low light results. But that is not the only impressive thing, there is another one I was hoping Fujifilm will do and that is the lowered base ISO of 125. I use a lot ISO 64 on my Nikon Z7 II because of the dynamic range you get and now Fujifilm's 125 ISO is as impressive as that. Fuji and Nikon measure ISO differently, so I won't get into that. The important thing is that you can recover more detail in the shadows and highlights without too much noise creeping in. The photo autofocus works very good. I had no problems with it while testing the camera. Photo autofocus was not a problem for me on the X-T4. Well, maybe the tracking, but I don't use it that often. The video autofocus was a problem and I am glad to say that it is improved and on some lenses like the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 is almost perfect. Now let's take a look at the video autofocus with the face and eye detect on and after that at a low light autofocus test.
I know Fujifilm promotes this as a photocentric camera now, but I still consider it to be a hybrid camera because the video specs are impressive and better than the ones on the X-T4. You now have a 4K HQ mode that gives you a downsampled image from 6.2K. You also have the option to shoot 6.2K up to 30p and 4K 60p with a 1.2 crop. All this in 10 bit 422 up to 360 megabytes per second. That is impressive for the price and more than enough for many situations. You also have F log 1 and F log 2 available if you need more dynamic range for your footage. And of course, all the film simulations like the Eterna Cinema, which is one of my favorite to use when shooting video. The Fujifilm X-T5 also does a great job in low light, as you can see in this sample footage. The noise, like all Fujifilm cameras, looks organic and it is easy to denoise in post. The X-T5 gives good results until ISO 6400. IBIS works very well with lenses without optical stabilization, like you can see here. It performs the same as on the XH line. Before I tell you my overall opinion, let me show you two new features that I don't have on the X-H2S at the moment, and I'm glad that Fujifilm introduced them. First, we have Wrap Focus Point. Now you can move the focus box to the edge and pass on the other side. I love this feature. Makes things faster. The second is the red recording frame. This makes it easier to see when you are recording. Overall, the Fujifilm X-T5 is a nice step in the right direction. It would have been nice to have two models, one with this screen and one with the flip screen. Maybe for the X-T6. It has all the improvements I wanted and more than enough for people upgrading from older models like the X-T2. I love shooting at ISO 125 and the video coming out of this camera is just gorgeous. Is this camera for everybody? Well, no, but it is really a nice upgrade from the X-T4 and sits very well in the new Fujifilm lineup. So, if you were thinking of getting the Fujifilm X-T5, I highly recommend it. You won't find any camera as good as this one in this price range. 